one, hamstring devastation, which I will have no problem achieving. Laying hamstring curls, I'm sure, will be the main course of those. Maybe some seated, maybe some cable RDLs. Uh, quads, though, I think quads is just going to be leg extensions. And not because I just really like leg extensions, which I do, but I can kind of tell that my left knee is still a bit inflamed. Like, I wouldn't go so far as to call it really hurt, but I can tell it's still just a touch tender. So quads may be a bit less volume than normal, and instead will be more like fucking, um, just kind of a pump, you know? But that's what you gotta do sometimes. Either way, though, oh my goodness. I've got a confession, man. I haven't done calves for, like, it's got to be, well, actually, no, that's not true. I did calves, like, once in the last week. Not good, man. Not freaking good. And it's not even hard, either. I'm just being fucking lazy. That's all you got to do is pop a squat on the seated calf raise for, you know, 20 minutes, and you're good. You know, I, I, uh, I drove with one of my buddies to the gym a couple of days ago. And we stopped at his apartment because he said he had a home gym that I wanted to see. <laughs> he's got so not only is there like a full on power rack and everything, but he's got a seated calf raise in his fucking living room. That's what I need. That's what I need to get on. Because honestly, I don't really need to like I want pre workout for my big lifts. Chest, legs, arms, back. But calves? I'm not gonna take pre workout for calves. Kind of just because I never have a problem getting, you know, getting them pumped, and maybe that's maybe the only reason I'm saying that is because I think calves respond to frequent stimulation. Like you could do calves every day of the week, and be fine. I think it might even be good for you. So I don't think calves absolutely need insane destruction in each lift. I think constant and you know heavy stimulation. Well, at least it do a little bit of the trick. But I need to get back on my calves. Not that mine are too small, so I'm not totally boned. But we all know we got to be hitting calves. Pre-workout meal was some steak. Well, it was basically my Chipotle order. I just made it at home this time. So... Some soft, soft t flour tortillas, cubed up steak, and some shredded cheese. Not bad. But honestly, I feel kind of sleepy today. You know what I can tell? I did not drink nearly enough fucking water yesterday. To the point where I almost felt like I had a headache during yesterday's shoulder day. Purely because of the fact that I didn't, I wasn't hydrated enough like a total fool. So I've got my jug with some electrolytes today that I've been sipping on for a while. Because the last thing I want to do is not only have just my you know, performance hindered by the fact that I'm dehydrated, because you're going to be weaker, less energetic, you're going to have a fucking smaller pump. But also, if you're dehydrated, you're gonna, it's almost a fucking guarantee you're just going to get headaches on a pretty consistent fucking basis. And for one thing, that's stupid. If you can avoid that, why wouldn't you? But a headache when you're lifting, especially on something, well, on any kind of set, but especially on like heavy days like back or chest and legs, where you're really fucking you know, exerting yourself, you're going to fucking feel it if you got a goddamn headache. So whenever I hear people talk about that, my first question is always, oh, did you drink any electrolytes today? How, how much water did you drink today? And guess what? I never hear them say, full gallon. Gallon already, man. What are you talking about? Of course. You know, that just doesn't happen. And not only for lifters, but just anybody. If you know somebody that's had a fucking you know, shit ton of headaches, just tell them, to, <laughs> tell them to start carrying around a jug like a lifter. And I can, uh, I can say with a reasonable amount of certainty, they're going to have higher odds of reducing their chances for those for sure but Sunday evening I don't predict that the gym will be too packed but either way 
Let's just hope not everyone is doing a, a ton of hamstring equipment right when I walk in. Because then I will be boned. Let's, uh, let's get in there. Instead of a, as much weight as possible set, this will be more so as much weight as I can control, squeeze, kind of burnout style. I guess what you'd maybe call more of just a typical set. One more here, and then I think some leg curls next. Oh my god. Oh, fuck. This is a heavy stack. Yeah, length would have to be perfect now. Whew. Instead of super heavy double leg, I think a light single leg set will be good. So five reps on the right leg, five on the right, five on the five on the right, left, right, left, back and forth until I'm done. It's just a different way to do it. Honestly, I kind of like doing these rest pause sets when I do anything, you know, single sided. I don't know if I can exactly explain why. I just kind of like it. One more like that. No, oh my God. Fuck, dude, my hamstrings are gonna fucking fire. Oh, <sighs> 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 
Okay. Hands change are cooked. Let's get some leg extensions going. Ah. There we go. All right. I sat down on the leg extension and my left knee is just a little too tender for me to think it's going to be good for me to hit quads. So I'll save them for next time. But hamstrings are still fucking pumped up to the point that I feel like when I walk, I'm just hobbling. Back to our regularly scheduled content. But yeah, so no quad pump, purely. Oh, this tape kind of fell off. Damn. Whew. Yeah, so I got the fucking big ass scraped knee. Damn. I put some sports tape on it to keep the band-aids from coming off, but I guess they they got too sweaty. Oh, but let's see how hamstrings look pumped and quads and calves look. Unpumped. Within the next few months, I want to get to the point where I need to buy new shorts. Because these ones are feeling a little bit too baggy. I mean, come on. That's certainly a bit of hamstring in there for sure. Oh, I'm really aiming to make this line that separates quad and hamstring as big as fucking possible Ooh. but hamstring pumps quads unpumped hamstrings look fucking huge which would make sense but it's still cool nonetheless and then quads unpumped not too shabby not too shabby if i do say so myself okay this is not what we should be seeing there should be no striations or feathering during a bulk. This is fucked. I gotta get rid of these and cover them up with some more fat. Not purely for the purpose of getting fat, but because that'll mean that I'm actually eating in a real ass surplus. Well, nothing else to say. Let's get in the car mobile. Sam, all you did was hamstrings. You're goddamn right I did. So what? If quads need a little bit more time to rest, or if my knee needs a little bit more time to rest, that doesn't mean I'm gonna fucking skip. Are you nuts? Come on, man. No chance. A, uh, I'm much more inclined, well, I'm much less inclined to skip the gym for any reason. So even if I had a chest day, but let's say fucking I hurt my chest or something, I mean, you've seen it, it fucking happens to me sometimes. I'll just do something else. I'll do some forearms, do some calves. Uh, I think part of that is just because um, I'm a fucking nut and I always want to be in the gym every day because it's like my thing, it's what I like doing. But I don't think that's a bad scenario for progress. Right? I'm not saying it's the best, of course. I take rest days every so often if I actually need them. But somebody who's more inclined to go to the gym, no matter what, all the time, and I'm not saying like, you know, work th through injuries and like work out while they're still hurt, but I just mean somebody who is, I mean, in a sense, like an unstoppable force, in a sense that they're, uh, you know, just always going to hit the gym no matter what, they're going to get more gains than the guy who's more inclined to say, oh man, I think I should take a rest room. I think I'm due for a rest week. So, I'm not saying you have to be one or the other. Obviously, the in-between state, which contains all lifter under the fucking sun. But the more of a nut you are, it could help you be more disciplined. You know, in a sense, I feel like I'm, I've said the word in a, the phrase in a sense a hundred times. Uh, in a way, 
I think I'm a little bit spoiled because I don't really think I need much discipline, per se. Like, if you looked at, I mean, what's the definition of discipline? I feel like everybody always says, like, doing shit when you don't want to do it. I mean, sometimes if I'm really tired, or if I had a, a seriously long day of, like, school or work or some kind of shit, uh, I guess not so much work now, but I mean, I'll have some days where I'm, like, fucking six till eight working on schoolwork. Now, usually that's just because I've procrastinated, but still, it happens. And then, you know, I've got to take my pre at, like, ten and go hit on the craziest day of leg day. I'm like, holy fuck, dude, I'm fucking tired. I'm still going to go. So, in that kind of instance, I do got some discipline. But, you know, nine, 19 out of 20 times, I really just want to lift. You know, it's my fucking thing. Right? You're not, um, I'm trying to think of a comparison. You're not going to tell a fish not to swim. You know, you're not going to tell a monkey not to swim from the vines. It's just what they like doing. You know? So, when it comes to you know, motivation and like David Goggins style, like, you know, get up when you don't want to and go grind, that kind of shit. Um, if that's you and you really have to fucking force yourself to get in the gym and it, that's a challenge as well, then I'm not knocking you for it, but I think you should definitely try to find the aspects of the gym which you enjoy the most. Like maybe, you know, doing sets where you're actually progressively overloading and you're getting a little bit stronger over time. Maybe that really gets you excited. Or you know, just whatever. You know, if you can focus on the positive stuff, then that should make you more excited about the gym. And then that initial battle of even going will become a bit smaller. Because you won't even be thinking about it as like a grand scheme of like, oh crap, okay. Fuck, I gotta go to the gym today, okay. You'll be a little, you'll be uh, maybe a little bit more hyper focused on like, okay, I'm gonna do this set today. If you can make it such that uh, in your mind, the idea of going to the gym is, it's not even a question, it's a guarantee, then I think that's probably one of the biggest steps there is to actually making gains. If somebody who every time they went to the gym, they had an awesome fucking baller workout. But, you know, half the time they took rest days, or half, the, or not rest days, like half the time they skip the gym, uh, you know, they take like a month off every so often, they're going to get shit results compared to the guy who can go in day after day after day and have, you know, decent workouts. Not to say that you should just go in every day and fuck around, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And then the better you get at it, the better results you'll get, and that's just a fucking positive feedback loop. Not that any of this is fucking groundbreaking information. We all know that the longer we do shit and the more we practice stuff, the better we'll get at it. But you know, sometimes even simple things need to be kind of reiterated and they're worth sort of thinking over in your fucking mind. Even if it seems obvious. You know? If you saw somebody doing a fucking really shit routine and they were complaining about getting no results, <laughs> I almost feel like that's... You kind of have to tell someone, like, hey, man, maybe you wouldn't hurt your hand if you didn't hit it with a hammer. Like, there's, they're fucking themselves up. They're not really... That, that made more sense in my head than it did coming out. So totally forget about that part. But if somebody's doing a shit routine, and then they're complaining about their shit results, you know what they're due for. It's just a simple reality check. And if you can do that, if you can actually kind of look at yourself and your routine and a bunch of other shit objectively... And realize, like, okay, this is the stimulus, right? This is what I'm doing, and this is the result that it's giving me. You know, if you can actually look at that objectively, right? Don't say, like, oh, my, my shitty genetics, or oh, blah, blah, blah. Don't blame anything else. If you can honestly say to yourself, like, okay, this is where I am, and it's because I've been doing this for, like, two years. If you can do that, I think it'll be a bit easier for you to say, okay, this is where I want to be. And I think doing something more like this will help me get there. So, basic accountability speech. But enough of that. E freaking enough of that. So, quads will be back probably for next leg day. It kind of sucks whenever I, I tweak something. 
And this wasn't even a fucking lifting related incident. This was just me being a fucking fool when I crashed my bike. But whatever. Work around it. Work a freaking around it. I've um I've gradually become a little bit more uh let's just say wise in my training to the point where now I can say, all right, my knee is a little bit sore. I can tell it's a little bit inflamed. It kind of hurts doing leg extensions. I'm going to take a break. I think if we reverse time a few years, I would probably still try to do a really hard quad day, even though it hurt my knee, just because of my mind. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Thug it out. I think the more of those you know, minute changes that I make in a positive manner, the better. The freaking better. Hamstrings, I can still feel they're fucking pumped up. Cardio and calves tomorrow morning, followed by chest in the evening. That's it, man. More food to come. Uh, I didn't weigh myself this weekend because I'm back at my, uh, I was back at my parents' house, and the only scale here, I don't think is accurate, because I weighed myself at school one day. And I was like 258, whatever. Or no, no. Yeah. And then when I came here, the scale read like 263. And this is on the same day. And I know I did not eat or drink five pounds worth of stuff in that, uh, in the time between my weighings. So I think I need to get a really fancy pants scale. I said this either the in the last video or the one before that one. Uh, you know, the last thing I want to do is, um, you know, step on the scale. And then have it say that I'm like 260, but really I'm only like 253. You know, that's stupid, right? I want a real accurate reading. So maybe I'll if we can look up on Amazon or something like a real fancy pants scale. Accurate to the tenth of a pound. But until then, I know I'm just going to be eating enough food to continue gaining weight. And fuck, man. We're getting pretty big. So, a nearing 260, bulked. Uh, I saw some comments that said, or I saw one comment where it was like, it seems 260-ish now. Um, I don't think I'm 260 on a consistent basis. That was like a, a spiked weight. I think right now I'm really floating around 257, and it's going to gradually keep increasing. But the comment was like, if he's 260 now, he's going to be 235 stage weight. That's not... That's too heavy for classic. Dude, no, 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 come on. I was 235 at the beginning of, or at the end of the dieting phase, the end of the cut that I did before this bulk, and that was not show ready. You gotta remember, bulked up weight does not mean I've gained 30 pounds of muscle. Not even fucking close. But I am getting pretty big, so. Uh, it's not like, I mean, I kind of, I feel like I am just sort of a meathead at heart. I really am just like getting big for the sake of it because I like it. But when you're this big, you got to step on stage eventually, you know. So don't worry, that will happen. But not, let's just say it isn't planned. It's not planned yet. But it will definitely happen. And honestly, maybe sooner than expected. Like if I. It, this is maybe a little bit of a drastic goal, but if at the end of this bulk, I'm high 260s, like maybe even 270 on a really crazy day of eating, which that's a pretty big goal. I don't know if I'll get up that high, but 265-ish morning weight off season, and I'm relatively lean too. I think that might be cute to do a little five foot eleven I, I forget what class that is I don't remember but, yeah. there will be a show eventually but, how about this I'll update you you'll be the first one to know because the day that gets decided these videos are no longer gonna say bulking and cutting it's gonna say show prep day one or 30 days till yeah, whatever but you know, don't get too excited about big shit like that 
uh, I think it's a little bit of um, it's a little bit of a motivation killer, in a way. Uh, and I'll I'll get into this when you get into like really getting hyped up about a massive goal. Like if your goal was, of course, if I'm making a video, it's about lifting. So let's just say your goal is to win a bodybuilding show. If you haven't done it before, then this would be an amateur show. But whatever. If that's your goal, then I think really thinking about it too much, uh, it can almost sort of take away its value. You know, like if that's your goal, the more you think about it and like you get excited about it. Like, if you kind of visualize yourself achieving it all the fucking time, and you're like, yeah, oh my god, it's going to feel so good. You're like, you're like thinking about it, you're just like, you, know, you crack a smile, just even just thinking about it, you're like, oh, nice, oh my god, that's going to be great. Uh, in a sense, and I'm not saying don't have big-ass goals, but I feel like what can happen is you can sort of desensitize yourself to it, to the point where visualizing something like that and really, like, hyper-fixating on it in a... Which is kind of weird, because of course I do think you should do that. You should be kind of almost delusional with your goals to you know, aim really fucking crazy big. But in a way, you can kind of desensitize yourself to it. Because you're getting a dopamine release in your fucking mind that's not that dissimilar to actually fucking achieving it. You know? So, it's like, if you do that too much, it just kind of sounds like high school kid fucking campfire ideas. Like, dude, let's start a business, bro. Oh, that's gonna be sick. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm really translating the idea of that as well as I would like to. But, sort of, uh, the next level of that sort of idea is it's good to kind of aim for something crazy-ass big like that. But, in a way, I like the fact that it's so far away. And if you can kind of cut that down to size on a day-by-day -day scale, then every day, get hyped up about taking a step forward towards it. And then if that's what makes you excited and you enjoy the process of doing that, then there's nothing that's going to fucking stop you, man. Right? If my end-all, be-all goal was like, you know, 250 pounds lean on stage or whatever, if that's what I was like, that's my end goal, that would be awesome. All good. But... The fact that I can get excited about just doing my lifts, making weight progress, getting bigger and stronger, you know, progressing my fucking build, if that's what really gets me going, then I don't even have to really think about that end-all, be-all goal. I just get to enjoy the process of doing it. So, I think that's really what I'm trying to say. You know, cut down whatever you want to do to small day-by-day -day steps. And if you can get excited about it, I think you're setting yourself up for success. I think that's all I gotta say. Plan now is home, eat, drink a fuck ton of water because I think I'm still a little bit dehydrated. Eat some more, finish washing all my laundry, and then drive back to school later. So that's it. I'll see you next time for chest.